Something incredible about this habitat is that last time I was filming here, which was last summer, they had just done a prescribed burn. So all of this was black and there were barely any plants around. But now the whole area after just six months is overgrown with palm trees and stuff. Despite this habitat being a scrub, there's also plenty of pine trees around, both leaved and bare. On the bare snags were many different kinds of birds perching, like this beautiful red-shouldered hawk which seemed to be scoping the area down on the ground for food, like lizards. As well as smaller birds like this pine warbler right here. These pine warblers were everywhere throughout the park and they were traveling with other small birds like an eastern tauhi that we were able to hear but weren't able to, uh, unfortunately, get any footage of. The leafier pine trees were full of wasps for some reason, like this beautiful southern yellow jacket which is a species I'd never seen in Florida before. Some of the best finds of the day in my opinion though were on the ground, like these Florida scrub lizards, which are actually in the same family as the fence lizards, spiny lizards, and horned lizards. These are an endangered species, so it was great to see two of them in close proximity to one another. I only ever see these guys on the ground, and in my opinion they have great, almost perfect camouflage in the sand and leaf litter that they live in. While tiger beetles are a group of beetles that are known for the intricate patterns that they can come in, the unicolored tiger beetle which is a subspecies of the festive tiger beetle, is perfectly named since its entire body is a beautiful metallic blue-green. In the same family as the tiger beetles is this warrior beetle right here, a member of the genus Passimachus, which has a similar habitat preference and habit of living on the ground as tiger beetles, except instead of relying on speed and agility like tiger beetles do, warrior beetles rely more on their bulkiness and strength to survive. They actually have the ability to take down and eat insects of similar size. Yep, that's my life for mischievous bird grasshopper right there. Not what I was looking for, but even better, a lifer. Just went behind the palm frond. I'm gonna try and catch it. I see exactly where it is without actually seeing it. I got some good pictures. I'm gonna see if I can catch it. Yes! This is a mischievous bird grasshopper. Yep, this is my lifer. Mischievous bird grasshopper right here. Check this out. So, the mischievous bird grasshopper is very similar to a species I already have on my life list, the rusty bird grasshopper. But the antennae are shorter and thicker, as you can see. But also, look at that ridged pronotum. That ridge on the top of the thorax right there is very arched and you can see it pops up a lot like an arch on top of the thorax. Very distinctive way to identify the mischievous bird grasshopper. Also mischievous bird grasshoppers are usually uniform in color, so in this case like a grayish color, but they also come in reddish brown and brown. As you can see, it's relatively patternless, except for a little pale line on the top of the thorax and head. Beautiful species of grasshopper, and a lifer for me that I've been wanting to get for a very long time. Despite its bulky look, the mischievous bird grasshopper is actually one of the smaller species of bird grasshopper. In grasshoppers, the females are larger than the males, and you can tell that this individual right here is a female by the presence of an ovipositor and the lacking of a subgenital plate in cerci, as in males. Now the most common species of schistocerca I see around here is the American bird grasshopper, and I've actually caught male American bird grasshoppers similar in size and even larger, sometimes, than this female mischievous. Now, you may associate camouflage with patterning, but as you can see on this mischievous bird grasshopper, no patterning works very well to make these almost invisible in their habitat. 